So this is how you brush. If I zoom in and you look at this model skin, you can see the texture of our skin are moving. Let me just create a new layer so I can explain this. So if you want to brush, make sure you observe the texture of your model skin and see which direction they are going. And for this my model, the texture of our skin are moving in this direction. So I can see how the texture of our skin are moving. If I if I look down here, the texture are like this. They are like this. They are like this. So they are moving in my left direction like this. So if I want to brush right now, I can brush like this. I can just brush like this to this direction like this. I'm not going to brush like this. I don't know if you understand, but I'm not going to be brushing like this or like or like this. I'm just going to brush like this according to the texture for the on the model skin. Why this part of the image, the textures are moving this way like this. They are moving this way like this. They are moving this way like this. So if I want to brush on this other part of the of the skin, I'm just going to brush like this with my mixer brush like this. Let me erase that. So I'm not going to be brushing like this, like this, no, or like this. So I'm just going to brush according to the shape of my body and according to the textures of the skin. So let me just delete that and brush right now so you can see what I mean. Hi everyone, today here. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to retouch beauty headshots like this and how I retouch this picture from like this to like this. So let's get started. And this image was taken by an amazing photographer. She is my friend. Her name is Uche and I'll be leaving her Instagram handle in the screen right now. So make sure to go check out her page. Thank you so much for sending me this image so I can use it for this video tutorial. So the first thing I'll do, I'll first of all, process my raw file in capture one so i use my capture one to process my raw file and there are many software out there you can use to process your raw file you can use lightroom or you can use camera raw but i prefer to use the capture one software so if you want this capture one software send me an email i'll be leaving my email in the description below so i can send this software to you this is my capture one interface and the first thing i'm going to do once i'm in capture one since i'm going to be posting this picture for instagram i'm going to crop my image four by five so the instagram ratio for portrait image is 4 by 5 so to crop my image in capture one i'll just come here and click on this crop tool up here like this so once i click on my crop tool if you want to set your ratio to 4 by 5 you just right click and you're going to see 4 by 5 this is for instagram so if you are posting an image for instagram make sure your crop ratio is 4 by 5 you can also crop your image in photoshop but i prefer to just crop my image in capture one but if i'm in a situation where i can't crop my image in capture one i use photoshop to crop my image so i'm just going to crop my image now and i'm just going to resize so i'm just going to frame my image right so i think my framing so i think i like the framing like this so once i'm okay i'll just click on enter so next thing i'm going to do right now i'm going to make my basic adjustment which is to um reduce my highlight open up my shadow just the basic adjustments to make this image looks good and to do that i'll just come to my exposure tab right here this is my exposure tab this is my exposure tab so i'll just click on it so once i'm on my exposure tab you can see i have my height i'll just scroll down to my high dynamic range and i have my highlights i have my shadows i have my whites and i have my blacks so these are the sliders i'm going to be working with this is just my basic adjustment which i do in capture one and to use these sliders i'll first of all bring down my highlights a little bit like this i'll open up my shadows a bit feel it's too much so i'll just open up my shadows a bit i'll bring down my white and i'll bring down my blacks a little bit like this just to add a little bit of contrast to this image and for my levels i'll just push my shadows inside a bit to add a little bit of brightness and i think i'm good so this so this is basically what i do in my capture one and i think i like this image like this so let's see our before and after this is how the image was before and this is how it is right now so i just did my basic adjustment in capture one you don't have to do much just do your basic adjustment and you are good to go so i'm done with my capture one so next thing i'm going to do for this image i'm just going to open it in photoshop and to open my image in photoshop i'll just come here i'll right click right here and you're going to see edit with photoshop not open with photoshop make sure you click edit with photoshop so i'm just going to click on edit with photoshop and i'm using photoshop 2019 so i'm just going to click on edit with photoshop right now and uh, i'm going to be using system bit you can use 8bit if you want but since i'm editing just this image i'm going to be using system bit because my system is not so fast but if i'm editing multiple image i usually use 8bit 
but since i'm just going to be touching this this single image i'm going to be using 16 bits my format is on tiff and my option is on uncompressed my accessibility profile is on adobe rogb 98 my resolution is the 300 my scale is on fix so i'm just going to click on edit variant right here and once i click on edit variant this image is going to export to photoshop now that we have our image in photoshop the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to duplicate my layer by clicking on ctrl j you can see i've duplicated my layer so next thing i'm going to do for this image i'm just going to do a little bit of liquify for this image so i'll just come to my filter and i'll come to my liquify so i'll click on my liquify so i'll click on this face too right here I just want to tune the face a little bit so i'll just bring a chin inside like this and i'll bring this jaw down a little bit like this and i'll bring this side inside like this and you can click on this preview icon to see your before and after so just click on this preview to see your before click on it again to see your after so i think i'm okay like this so i just click on okay and you can see our before and after i like this image like this so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to be using my retouching academy to edit this picture and i'll be running my focus separation action using my retouching academy and if you want this retouching academy also send me an email i'll leave my email in the description below so if you're using this retouching academy focus separation looking at my image you can see this image is sharp so i'll be using a high blur radius to edit this image if this image is not so sharp i'll be using a smaller blur radius to edit this image so if you want to learn how to understand focus separation blur radius i have a video for that and i'll be leaving a card to that video at the end of this video so you can watch it also i'll be leaving a link to that video in the description below so right now i want to do my focus separation so i just click on my focus separation via gaussian blur i usually use this via gaussian blur a lot of people use via medium but i don't use via medium so i use via gaussian blur so i just click on focus separation via gaussian blur with my retouching academy so once i click on that it's going to show me gaussian blur radius so for my radius since this image is sharp i'm going to be using nine for this image so i'll just use nine for this image and click on okay the reason why i use nine because i want to retain more of the texture on the skin i just don't want the image to be smooth i want to retain more textures on the skin but if i want the image to be smooth i'll just use a smaller blur radius like six and the image will be smooth but i don't want that i want texture to remain on the skin so that's why i use nine so moving on the next thing i'm going to do right now i'm going to remove the blemishes on the model skin and to do that you can either use your close thumb tool or use your spot healing brush tool or use your patch tool but i prefer using my close thumb tool if you're using this retouching academy focus separation your textures the, te the textures on the image are inside this high texture copy so if you want to work on the blemishes make sure your high texture copy is selected so i'm just going to select it right now and i'll come to my toolbar and just pick my close thumb tool once i pick my close thumb tool I'll just hold alternate to sample from a close by area and just paint over the blemishes like that. Hold alternate and paint over the blemishes. Hold alternate and just brush over the blemishes like that. Hold alternate and brush. So I'll be doing this for the whole blemishes on the image just to remove the blemishes. And I'll forward this part and once, I, once I'm done, I'll get back to you guys. Okay, we are done. Now let's see our before and after. So these are before and these are after. You can see i've removed those blemishes on the model skin now the next thing i'm going to do so i'm going to be using my mixer brush to mix the colors on the skin and to make the uh, face a little bit smoother so to do that i'll come to this my corrective tool layer right here this is my empty corrective tool layer so once i click on it i'll pick my mixer brush tool and um make sure your high texture layer is turned off so i'm just going to click on this eye icon right here to turn off my high texture layer so once I click on my high texture layer, you can see this image is now blurry. Once your image is blurry like this, the next thing you should do is just brush on your model skin and uh, brush according to the shape of your model skin. So I'm, good, I'm just going to show you what I mean. And make sure your mixture brush setting is um, like this. Your weight is on 20, your load is on 30, your mix is on 20, your flow is on 30. So just use my settings up here and make sure sample or layer is checked. So this is how you brush. If I zoom in and you look at this model skin, you can see the texture of our skin are moving. Let me just create a new layer so I can explain this. So if you want to brush, 
make sure you observe the texture of your model's skin and see which direction they are going. And for this my model, the texture of her skin are moving in this direction. So I can see how the texture of her skin are moving. If I if I look down here, the texture are like this. They are like this. They are like this. So they are moving in my left direction like this. So if I want to brush right now, I can brush like this. I can just brush like this to this direction like this. I'm not going to brush like this. I don't know if you understand, but I'm not going to be brushing like this or like or like this. I'm just going to brush like this according to the texture for the on the model skin. Why this part of the image, the textures are moving this way like this. They are moving this way like this. They are moving this way like this. So if I want to brush on this other part of the of the skin, I'm just going to brush like this with my mixer brush like this. Let me erase that. So I'm not going to be brushing like this, like this, no, or like this. So I'm just going to brush according to the shape of my model and according to the textures of the skin. So let me just delete that and brush right now so you can see what I mean. I'll come back, I'll pick my mixer brush and I'll just zoom in and I'll just zoom out, sorry, and turn off my high texture copy again and just brush like this. And remember, I'm brushing the highlight separately and I'm brushing my shadow separately. Don't mix it. Make sure you brush your highlight separately and you brush your shadow separately. So if you are retouching your, your image, please make sure you take your time to edit your image. The reason why I'm brushing this image because I don't want this image, because I don't want this video to be too long. So that's why I'm brushing this, this um, retouching. But I just want you to get the point. So just brush according to the shape of your model and take your time to brush. So let me just show you the before and after what we just did. So if I zoom in, let's see. This is the before and this is the after. This is the before and this is the after. You can see I'm brushing according to the shape of the model. This is the before and this is the after. So just take your time and do and do that. So I'm just going to be doing the same thing for the whole image. And I'm going to fast forward this step right now. And once I'm done, I'll get back to you guys. Okay, we are almost done. And remember, if you are brushing, don't just zoom all the way in like this and start brushing. No, make sure you zoom out and see where you are brushing. Because if you zoom in like this, you are not going to see what you are brushing. And once you zoom out, your image is not going to be looking good. I think we are done. Let me just turn on my hair texture so you can see. Wow, you can see how good this image is. You can see how good and sweet this image is. And you can see, see the image has texture and is looking smooth. So your image doesn't have to look all flat and uh, too smooth for you to have a good image. You can still have texture on your image and your image will look smooth. As you can see this image, you can see it has texture and the image is looking smooth and good. So let's see our before and after. So this is our before uh, using our mixer brush and this is after using our mixer brush. So let's see our overall focus separation before and after. So this is our before focus separation and this is our after focus separation. This is before focus separation, this is our after focus separation. You can see how good this image is. If you've learned anything from this video so far, make sure to hit on that like button so that more people can see this video and learn from this video. So the next thing I'm going to be doing for this um, image, I want to even out the skin tool, I want to make the skin tool look even. So I'm going to be doing that using gradient map. So I'll just come to my gradient map, click on my gradient map. Click on the normal black and white. Make sure your gradient map is on black and white. Select your black and white color and click on OK. So once you click on OK, invert your mask. So just this is the mask right here that you are inverting. This is your gradient map. Invert it by clicking on Ctrl I to invert. And once you invert, come to your gradient. Click on your gradient like this. And this black part contains the shadows. And this white part contains the highlight. So I'll just click on my shadows like this. So once I click on my shadow, I'll click on color and pick on any shadow area on my image that I want all my shadows to look like. And for the sake of this image, I want all my shadow area to look like this part right here. This is the this is the shadow area. So I'm just gonna click on this part right here. That all my shadows are going to look like that part right here. And once I'm done, I'll click OK. And for my highlights, I'll click on this white right here and I'll click on color 
so once i click on color i'm going to pick a part of my image which i want all my highlights to look like and now for this um and i want all my highlights to look like this nose right here so i'll just click on this nose right here and once i'm done i'll click on okay and to get my me to i'll just click on this place right here so once i click on it once it's going to show me a box like this uh, once i click on the box it's going to show i'm going to click on color again and right now i'm going to pick which area i want all my me to look like and i want all my me to look like this part right here so i'm just going to click on this part right here because i want all my me to look like that once i'm done i'll click on ok and i'll click on ok again and i'll hide my gradient map properties like that so the next thing i'm going to do i'll come to my i'll come to my layer this layer which i inverted i'll pick my normal brush tool i'll pick my normal brush tool make sure my foreground color is on white if it's not on white you can click on this icon here right here to change this from white to black and if you want to reset it click on these two icons right here to reset it to black and white so make sure your foreground color is on white pick your normal brush tool flow is on 100 opacity is on 100 brush on any part of the skin excluding the makeup and the lips and the eyes so i'm just going to brush on the skin like this and i'm going to be fast about this i don't i just don't want this video to be too long remember don't brush on the makeup and don't brush on the eyes but you can brush and don't brush on the lips as well but you can brush on any part of the skin so i'm just going to do that for the whole skin for this image like this i don't want i don't want this video to be too long i'm just going to be fast about this but if you are doing this and if you are retouching your image please take your time to do please take your time to do this because it's very important so once i'm okay with it the next thing i'm going to do i'll come to my properties again open up my properties and once, once my properties is open i'll click on my layer and it's going to show me feather so i'm just going to feather it like this so once I feather it like this, you can see it has filled those edges. I'm just going to hide my properties again. And right now, what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to reduce the opacity to 10. And you can see our before and our after. The skin tone are looking even right now. These are before and these are after. But you can also change the blend mode to soft light. So let me change to soft light and see. So I'll change it to soft light. Let's see our before and after, which one works better. These are before. And these are after i think soft light works better so i'll just leave it in soft light but if you are not seeing the difference there's no problem you can always increase the opacity if you want to see the effect so this is the before and this is the after so i think i'll leave my opacity in 20 with the soft light so that's how you even out your skin tone in photoshop so guys i don't want this video to be too long and because of that we're doing a part two which is the continuation from what we stop on this video on my next video so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure to hit the that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that when i post the part two of this tutorial you can get a notification and you can watch the continuation of this video so i'll see you guys in my next video stay creative